Well, we'll go and dive in here. We've got about 85 people on. I know people will be joining as we get deeper into the conversation here. But first and foremost, thanks everybody for joining this special live online event today. It's a little bit unique in that we've got a, a special guest uh, guest speaker today. And you know, the reason we pulled this this event together so quickly, uh, if any of you guys were uh, hearing our conversation, is you know we're in we're all in this together. You know, our business has really been um, crafted and been built around our dealer partner base. Our goal is to support you guys the best we can. And with these tumultuous times, you know, we felt it was important to try to add value and help you guys make sense of everything that's going on out there in, in, in the marketplace. And this one specifically is focused on really making sense of all the government assistance and the funding that's out there. And, you know, we're not, we're not experts in it. Hmm. Uh, however, we have a gentleman who's joining us today, Vinny Fisher. He is the CEO of Fully Accountable. And just for a little bit of background, uh, Fully Accountable is a financial and accounting outsourcing firm. So Vinny's clients are uh, very interested in this subject, just like you guys are. His client base is looking to find resources, find ways and means to survive this current crisis. So it's been incumbent upon Vinny and his team, and Vinny specifically, to become very, very knowledgeable about the, the government assistance and specifically the CARES Act. So he has spent hours and hours pouring through this and spends hours and hours on a daily basis because there's a lot of uh, evolving fluid information and processes that are going on with this CARES Act. So, you know, there's nobody on the Alibi Security team that could deliver this information. And that's why we brought in a subject matter expert to spend some time with you guys and gals today to help you guys navigate some of the current government resources. So, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Vinny. I'll come back at the end with a little bit of information about some of the resources that we're posting online that will help you guys find the right places to go, the right links to click on. And we'll be also be posting this uh, webinar online a little bit later on today. So if you guys miss any part of it or you just want to go back and review some of the information that Vinny shares with us, we will uh, have that up and ready for you guys to use. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. And I'll go ahead and grab. And so, oh, go ahead. Um, uh, I'm going to see who can who can share. I'm going to do this. It's weird what it's letting me do here. Um, that's weird. Do you, need, do you need me to make you a host? I do, please. So yes. I can actually uh, have the right to share here. It's weird. Bear with us. Okay, yeah. got it. Got, got it. it. Sorry okay. about that. It was the Zoom uh, police were waiting to catch up there a little bit. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and grab uh, this part of it for us. And there we should be able to go. Okay, you know, so I wanted to first say a couple of things that Chris and Bill and uh, your, your team, your executive team, how you guys jumped on this. And I wanted to echo a few words that uh, I don't know uh, most of you who are participating in today's Call, but our team, I'm super proud of what happened at Fully Accountable and what they asked me to do as the CEO to get in front of this. You know, I, what one of the things that Chris um, in mentioning about me is, you know, I've been for over 20 years um, doing a lot of uh, kind of high end, uh, I'm a tax attorney by my training. I, I don't have my law practice per se anymore. I still have my active tax and license designations, but this is stuff that I do on a very regular basis. I get involved in legislation. I understand and interpret it. I'm going to say right here that, you know, the idea of the world shutting down as an economy and what's the, I don't think there are too many subject matter experts who, who on a daily basis study the world shutting down. But my goal today is I want to help you focus on you as a business owner and what we're gonna to do to survive through this recession, uh, because it's gonna be a period of time in your business. It's not gonna be forever. And I'm not here to have a political opinion one way or the other about how someone may or may not feel about where we are. The reality is we are in this situation. And so our uh, government has provided some economic stimulus options available to each of you as an owner 
and even go beyond some of the loan provisions we're going to talk about. And so we're not only going to cover that loan, we're going to cover things that go beyond the CARE Act and how to really manage your cash flow through this recession. So not only surviving, I and mean, what can you do to position yourself to thrive on the back side of this? Hey, Vinny, think just, just, hey Vinny, just real quick, it looks like yeah. you may be sharing the preview PowerPoint screen instead of the main screen. You can't see my main screen? No, we, we can see it, but it looks like it's that preview. Huh. You may be in the right one. I just, I, I didn't know if you were sharing the right screen or not, sorry. Can you, all, can you only, I, I'm happy to show, but do you see our agenda for today? Yeah, I do now, yep. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. I think we're, okay. I think we're ready to roll. Sorry, man. My bad. My bad too, if, there, if you're seeing, you as a host might be able to see what I'm seeing, so our audience probably sees something a little bit. I gotcha. Um, I, if, if there's any problems, please, I can't see the chat from where I'm at, but you can communicate with Chris and Bill and they can certainly comment to you. Yeah, I'll be watching those as we go along. If there's any issues, by the way, I want, I'm really glad you actually said that. If you have questions along the way, everybody, this stuff, um, some of this is the first time this has happened since like World War II. And um, so we're not going to have many people who can say, well, this is what I did before, because most of them are either dead or beyond the working force. And so if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Chris and his team are going to moderate some of that. And I've actually asked some of our team to be in there and help on some complicated things that uh, maybe we all can be involved in. So uh, we're here to help. Yep, and actually, if they do that into the Q&A box specifically, that'll help us kind of manage everything through Q&A. Yeah, it's great. Really awesome. Yep. And so the main thing that everyone wants to talk about is kind of the CARES Act. You know, we're in the second week of uh, Congress has passed a large stimulus package, right? And uh, the idea behind this act is there's a paycheck protection program. There is also this economic injury disaster loan. There's some mortgage forbearance. There's a whole bunch of tax credits. There's an FMLA changes to the extent you have team. The big piece that everyone really is catching a lot of noise about is the payroll protection program. So I wanna start there and, and, and start with one big item. The whole idea of this program is to maintain jobs. They, a qualifying business has certain categories and we'll talk about that, but everybody, everybody is impacted by this disease regardless of where you stand and how you feel about it, businesses, many of them, it's illegal for them to go to work. And you may be in that category. Everyone has been impacted by this. So you qualify from the disruption portion. Now the question is, is are you the type of business that's eligible to apply for the payroll protection program? It will cover for, for as large as up to companies that are 500 employees. And let's forget, let's not, let's ignore some of the affiliation rules that address businesses that need to go beyond that number. Because I don't think that's our audience for not only the clients we serve, but as well as the audience of, of who's uh, listening today. Uh, it also covers self-employed sole proprietors and this idea of the independent contractor, which was intended to pick up kind of this solopreneur community. It's at that level of this legislation that frees up a lot of opportunity for what looks like uh, traditionally a mom and pop business, someone who might run a business uh, where you're not really taking wage inside of a payroll, but it's flowing through uh, in more of an S corp type setting where you kind of eat out of your bank account. Well, we're gonna talk about how this is truly makes you eligible for this program. So how does that work? The program terms are, are pretty clear in the sense that uh, it's from $1 all the way up to 10 million. The whole point of it is to protect wages. Now, if wages involve you as a kind of a sole practitioner, that's one calculation. If it's wages as it relates to people on your team, there's another portion to that calculation. The good news about this is it's a payroll plan. It's not designed to be a loan program based on your assets. So there's no collateral. There's no guarantees under like you might see a traditional SBA program. So if you would have had an SBA program that launched your business or expanded what you're doing, those rules are, have been um, kind of set to the side for this special legislation. There are deferral fees on principal and interest. As a matter of fact, as of 
last Thursday night, the SBA issued an interim ruling that uh, regardless of what the statute originally said in legislation, the SBA is going to set the loan term at two years and a 1% interest rate. There's been a lot of confusion around that. And so that's a six month deferral. And if your loan, we'll get into it, doesn't convert into a grant, then you will have a two year loan, really 18 months of interest and principal payments at a 1% rate of whatever doesn't convert over to a grant. And we'll get into those details here very quickly. One thing that everyone needs to know is that the payroll protection program is actually bank sponsored program through your bank. This is not where you went and applied on the website of the SBA for the disaster program that has that 10K advance piece, which we will discuss here in a few minutes. The program we're discussing right now is a payroll program. Your wages and the wages of your team, that program must be applied through your bank. Now, I wanna make sure real quick that if you've been watching the news, you're seeing that community banks and credit unions that have SBA certification seem to be moving faster than our, even our larger uh, banks in this country. And I will tell you from our clients, some of which who are already funded, that is a true statement. That doesn't mean that the big banks aren't going to catch up. It just means that the smaller ones were able to move a little swifter. The, the, the community banks have stepped up in a big way. And if you have a community bank relationship, I highly encourage you to use them because they're going to move a little swifter on this. One of the reasons that we tend to all use the bigger banks is their technology is a little more efficient, it's a little more caught up. But in situations like this, smaller community banks can actually move uh, in, in and out of this stuff a little swifter. It's kind of counterintuitive, but it's playing out true. So there's two parts to this process. One, remember, you've got to go to your bank. Once you are understanding that, there's two parts to this program. First, you need to calculate the amount that you're going to receive. The way that program works is you can calculate your monthly costs. And there's a straight calculation that I'll give you here in a second that comes out of the statute as revised by the SBA interim ruling. Once you have that amount, let's just for sake of this discussion, say that you calculate at $50,000 your monthly average cost. Under the calculation, you would be able to go to your bank and ask for a $125,000 loan. That's two and a half times that $50,000. So the way that works is you would actually go to your bank. Each of them will have a slightly different process in how you apply. All of them are trying to come up with an electronic process, all working off the same exact application, but a different way of getting there. Go and apply for that $125,000. Until last Thursday, there were four different calculations as to how you come up with this monthly cost. I know that's very confusing, and I'm sorry. The SBA attempted to make that smoother by saying you take the 12 rolling months from when you apply or all of 2019. And they have since issued another ruling as of yesterday, clarifying 12 months or all of 2019, whichever one actually um, appropriately paints the accurate picture for your company. Because the reason why they've given that flexibility is because some of you may have already removed people from your team and are waiting for some of the stimulus money to bring them back. So they don't want you to be hurt by a calculation that takes into account early April and late March when in reality, 2019 might have been a better snapshot of your pre-layoff, uh, pre-furlough picture of your company. Interestingly, because these loans are broken into categories, the way your banks are going to treat you are going to be under those tiers. So there's three tiers, and they're going to treat you in those three tiers, 350000 and down, 350000 to $2 million, and $2 million to $10 million. And I will tell you that most of the stuff that has been funded that you see on the news, a couple billion dollars that has already been placed are the larger ones. And, I, and I, it makes sense. It's because they would have had these bank relationships 
that would have walked it through. That doesn't mean the smaller loans are not going to be processed. It just means they broke it into a, a couple tiers. And so any noise you hear that are running out of money, don't believe that. You know, even the president got on yesterday and talked about funding this more if it got oversubscribed. But at this point, less than 10% of the entire loan package has even been dispersed. So there is a lot left there. So how is it figured out? This is where most of the controversy has existed over the last 10 days. When the rule originally came out, it was payroll cost, employees, full-time equivalents, and independent contractors. And then that got clarified or further confused, depending on which side of that you feel you're on, by the SBA's guidance. So as of right now, the compensation calculation is for your direct payroll team who are on your payroll census. What that means is there can be W-2 and non-W-2 people on your payroll census. You could also be using an organization like um, a payroll, um, like an employee benefits company, uh, or a fractional organization that provides that service for you. Regardless of how your payroll register is determined, that is what a bank is looking for to determine that primary compensation calculator. There will not be allowed in the calculation anyone that you can't show through that process. Now here's where that gets complicated for everyone on this call. It's about you, where you sit in there and your compensation to the extent you didn't push yourself through that same program as the owner. The banks have separated this week from next week in applying and they're going to have to come out with some more clarification as to how to help you determine your wages. They just issued some interim rulings. I'm here to tell you that you're going to qualify in the compensation. You're gonna to have to add a few more items to your worksheet, but you're going to be able to back into your wages, even if you have not been able to, to this point, show yourself in a payroll calculation. That will be covered. You will be able to, to include that. I'm an old tax lawyer. So I say as you apply with the appropriate best foot forward and make the bank and the process walk you back. Don't under apply and hope to fix that later because it's not gonna work that way. There are some direct costs that are not eligible. So if your wage is above $100,000, everything above $100,000 will not count. Any expenses for you as an employer to yourself or any of your team that are really just pass-through expenses but are not a cost to you, like federal taxes, then that is not a deductible expense or a expense you can include in your cost calculation. But any real costs, like state and local, uh, 401k, vacation, sick, other additional items that you pay towards your for yourself or anyone on your team is allowed to be included in that calculation. So here's the big part. Everyone wants to talk about, is this really a loan? Is this only a loan? It's not really a grant. This program is designed to be a grant. What the calculation that you're gonna use, let's go back to my $50,000 example. If you're going to the bank and you qualify for that $50,000 cost calculation that got you the $125,000 loan, it's that same calculation that's going to be applied to your business that's going to convert it from a loan to a grant. So let me walk you through that. 75% of your loan, because it's 2.5, so think of two months of your payroll costs being covered in this program. If you do the same thing for two months post-loan origination, that portion of your loan will convert to a grant. In addition, if you have rent, utilities, debt service, um, certain compensation, additional employee compensation, if you have these items, those will also be forgiven as part of this program as long as you meet that ratio. And the time frame for this calculation has been cleared up. It's for the eight weeks following your loan origination. This is an update from the SBA. 
there are moving parts. I recognize that there's been a lot of people out here giving kind of their little Facebook opinion about this after reading it. Recognize there are a lot of lawyers like myself who are digging into this. And the SBA is a regulatory body. body. They are not the final say on this. There is a law in place. And like everything else, you have a fiduciary obligation to your company to best represent yourself to the bank. And they're actually having you sign documents saying you've done the appropriate thing with the bank. Most of the underwriting burden is going to fall on you. So if you are able to get your calculation approved by the bank, that same calculation on the backside is what's going to be used with your uh, att attestation and perjury statements that that's true and accurate. If those are all appropriate, you are going to be forgiven of that loan. That $125,000 example will turn from a loan to a grant. And you will not have three things. You will not have income in that amount of $125,000. Just my just example. You will be able to keep that money and not have a loan to the government. And it will not be considered a forgiveness of debt to you, which will not trigger other issues in your company. This is truly a grant. Now, if you fall into a category where you have reduced headcount and you have laid people off, then your calculation is going to get compl complicated a little bit and you have to decide when you may want to hire people back. This is designed to protect payroll. You also could go through this whole program on my $125,000 example, run through your eight weeks, find out only 100 of the 125,000 converts into a grant, and you can give back the other 25,000 at that 1% loan if you wanna give a 1% loan from the government back and be free of any penalty because there's no prepayment penalty and there's no obligation for you to keep that. In order to actually participate in this program, you gotta apply, you have to apply by June 30th. There was some discussion when the statute, when this law was first passed, that you had to complete the program by June 30th. The SBA added some clarification that you just need to have your application in process by June 30th. There's been a lot of noise in the first few days of this program going live. We're only in the third business day of this going live. We're only in the 10th business day of a government backed stimulus actually producing dollars. The, just to give the government some benefit of the doubt here, and I don't like to give them a ton, is they are moving at warp speed. To have money hitting bank accounts already, to me, I have not seen this speed ever in my career, ever. So the fact that it might take a few days longer or your whole all-in time is going to be 10 days, please see that as a blessing. And I recognize some of you really need this cash right now. But please understand that the speed at which a bureaucracy is moving, um, normally this is months and months. So to, for me to see some of our clients being funded already and soon to be funded here by the end of the week is unbelievable. And I would also add that the government, the, the lower end people who qualify for this program, the money is not going to run out. But I, I would say there's no reason to wait all the way to the end of this program. Now, there is a real reason to consider in this program when to time it. If you're the type of business right now that has pulled some of your staff down and is waiting for business to kick back in, and you're like looking what May 1st is going to be, I would say get in line at the bank, but you may not want to originate your loan until close to that date. Like you may want to look at what you qualify for, get through into the process, and maybe you don't want to originate and have those dollars and have your weeks count until you're somewhere in the date when you're going to bring your people back. That's a calculation and a process. And I recognize that and I'm being uh, aware of it. So that isn't as simple as apply, start taking the dollars and put yourself in a worse situation had you been if you waited 10 days. I'm not saying wait 10 days and walk through the process with the bank. 
you may just want to originate uh, a few days later. And that's a more of a thing you can work through with your banker and your accountant who's helping you through some of this. There is a discussion about the economic injury disaster loan. This is a real thing. You could be in a situation where you have both the paycheck program and the idle program. But I wanna be really clear that this idle program is designed to be for real economic injury. It only has $10 billion sitting in its fund. This is not a new program. This has existed for a long time. It's hurricane relief happens, earthquake stuff, flood disaster. The Treasury funded this program with $10 billion for this current external disaster. In order to go out and get this 10K that everyone thinks they're going to go get their hands on, you have to go to the SBA and apply for this loan. I'm going to tell you now, most, if not all of you, are not going to qualify for this program. And some of you may qualify for this program and not get all $10,000. A very small amount of people that this legislation was designed to cover. That's why they came on back on top of this program and put the CARES Act in place. Now, there's a real scenario where both exist, where you can have the paycheck program plus EIDL. And in that scenario, it's where you are covering different expenses, where you're not taking all the qualified PPP expenses, as well as the EIDL covering each other's expenses. If they are, of course, you're going to have a disqualification of EIDL, and you're going to want that because the paycheck program is better. But in a situation where you have both economic disaster qualification and payroll to protect, I have more than one client who fall into that category. As a matter of fact, I have other ones, and many of you may be that, but just recognize that idle is not this everyone gets it, like the payroll program is designed to be. The other part of this program is the mortgage loan forbearance, right? Businesses, we have cash flow, we're real people, and there's a whole bunch of tax credits in this thing, but I kind of want to save that for another day. Um, and then there's FMLA. Back on this economic disaster and this tax credits and mortgage loan forbearance, the big part of this is looking at where single family and multifamily loans sit. You still have things to pay. You have things to deal with. Inside the CARES Act, you can apply for a forbearance of your mortgage, either on your single family or your multifamily home. All you have to do is write a letter to the bank. Now there's been some misapplication of this because the bankers aren't all aware of the law, but you are allowed to qualify under the statute for a six month forbearance. The banks aren't losing. All they're doing is not collecting interest or having a penalty for non-payment for six months. It's getting added to the back part of your loan. You're not being forgiven of six months. It's just extended on the back side six months. This is a way to free up cash flow. Now what's happening on the commercial side is banks are also recognizing that building mortgages and other things need relief. So you can actually, without statutory protection, go to your bank and say, hey, I need some reprieve. And lots of them are giving 90-day forbearances that act like that by asking and showing that you need it. Remember, the key to a business is it's we're leaking money. And the whole idea here is to manage your cash flow. What can you do to hold on to cash during this time? The stimulus events are to inject cash into your business. And those are really important. Please, they're available to you. Take advantage of them. They just require you to apply. In some cases, you don't qualify. And you'll learn that through the process. In other cases, they're there just by you having to go through it. I recognize some of this is complicated, which is why I stepped up real quick and our team went and put a bunch of tools together. So we've built tools for you. Go and get these. They're free. They're yours. We put a survival guide together, kind of a walkthrough guide of what I would do running your business and where I would maintain and deal with cash anywhere from 
uh, negotiating with vendors to how to actually extend my cash inside the business because without it, you have no business and you're not going to make it to the other side of this. I've given you example forbearance letters, a step-by-step -step guide to get through the loan, as well as a calculator to help you figure out what that loan looks like. And for you people who have a little bit larger team, we have also are updating the FMLA materials in there so that you can get a real understanding day to day of what's going on. And so the SBA speaks, we're trying to update this page with daily updates. You can do this. I want to encourage you. You don't need to sit here and wait later for how this is going to play out. This is for you. So please ignore the noise that it isn't and go take advantage of this. So here's what we're doing, just so you understand where our company is. Clients of ours, we live in the e-commerce and digital world. And for those clients who are clients of ours, our team stepped up in a big way. And I, I added this because I want to do a shout out to Rachel, our COO, and the rest of our team. I'm super proud of how they're walk, working these long nights and extra hours to help our clients get these funds. And we decided to step up in a big way and help them. We also did something real different. We are actually opening up our stimulus team to people who are not normally clients of ours to help through this process. If you want help and you don't feel like you're going to get it from your team, I am not here to give you a pitch about use us. Please use who you had. Go to your bank. But if you have a complicated situation and you're not sure you're going to get the right calculation done with your bank, we're here to help. We recognize we're overwhelming ourselves over the next 60 days, but we want all of the businesses to take advantage of this. And I'm going to be honest with you. We really, truly want to look back at this time and know that we helped. We don't want to be someone who looks back and say, man, we could have served a little better. And so our team is laying it out there. And um, that's why I took uh, Bill and Chris's invite to come and help. I am not here to say, use us. I'm here to say, go do this. And so with that, I'm going to turn it back into a conversation setting. Those things are available to you. They'll be in the recording. I want to go and pull open um, some of the chat stuff here. Chris, I'm going to look through here, but I think it'd be great if you were kind of our moderator. And yeah. if we wanted to go through some questions, I would love that. Yeah, for sure. So as I've been watching the Q&A and the, uh, the chat comments come in, there have been a couple that have uh, had to deal with contractors, right? So if you have 1099 employees under the PPP, how is that covered or handled? Yeah, so unfortunately, I want to be very clear and be on the record. I'm not going to be a waffler. I think leadership is required at this time. Last Thursday's ruling, advisory ruling by the SBA, I believe is not in line with the law as it is written. I believe some lawsuits are going to come up. I believe some legislation and some stuff, are, there's going to be a misapplication of the law, and there already is. But here is the ruling. If you have W-2 and non-W-2 employees that are paid through your payroll program, you are going to be able to apply as an a, a employer for those people. If you have people who are paid outside of that program, Unfortunately, if they fall into a 1099 category outside of your payroll register, the way the SBA has interpreted this law, those people are going to have to apply themselves, even though they might very well look like a full-time equivalent. Now, with that said, the Department of Labor is very clear what a full-time equivalent is. If this person basically works for you full-time, and they don't have, that's their primary source of revenue, but you didn't pay them through a payroll register, I would take the position of submitting them to the bank. And I would go to my bank and not take no as the first answer. You may ultimately lose in that analysis, but I wouldn't conclude of not trying to apply for them. Now, if, if it falls into what I would consider what we would think normally is an independent contractor, where they're doing work for you, but they have other sources of income where they're not look like your full-time equivalent, then I would say that the SBA's ruling would knock that person out of your calculation. That's great feedback. That's really good feedback. And I think that your main point there is, again, ask for more and have them push back on you, right, at the bank level. 
Yeah, and then versus on versus undershooting your estimation of what you do. Yeah, two reasons why for that, Chris. One is um, have a good faith understanding as to why you are arguing for what you're arguing. Yep. That's really important because the bank's going to rely on some of that because you're a person and you're a real thing. Two, um, if you decide to under submit and later on some of this stuff that gets cleared up, it is very clear in the mm -hmm. SBA advisory opinion, you are not going to be able to go back. Right. If you applied and they removed it as part of the calculation, you have what the law would call a justiciable or reasonable argument to say you should have got that in the first place. That's great. So uh, a couple other questions along the same line with uh, new businesses, businesses that have started up you know, in January or February of this year, they're kind of in startup mode or just getting their operations going. What's kind of the cutoff date um, for this assistance? So somebody called me out pretty hard yesterday on a, a national cast that was on with a few hundred companies. They said, hey, you can't have it both ways with this SBA ruling. I'm like, sure I am. I'm a lawyer. But here, here, here's one of the things they did really well in the SBA ruling from last week. They clarified for new businesses kind of your calculation. So the calculation is a rolling 12 months back from when you apply or a snapshot of 2019. So when the statute was first passed, they said January and February is your snapshot. But if you have January, February, and March now, and March paints a better picture for you of what's going on, then you're gonna be able to apply all three of those months into your calculation. So it's gonna be the months available to you up until the time you apply that you would use as your calculation. Gotcha, great. Now what about workers' comp and unemployment? Insurance. How, how, yeah. how do those count? The, and says, do they count towards those insurance premiums? Yes. Yeah, those are actually, those are real payroll costs. You need to pay those things in order to have people, and they include in your calculation. That is correct. That's great. Um, let's see here. Somebody talked about applying on the SB, SBC.gov. I think they mean SBA.gov website. That's just for the EI, the EIDL loan, correct? You don't, yeah, you there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a form, an actual PPP form that you have to physically fill out and take into your bank or your financial institution. Yeah, and, and by the way, good news, most banks, because of the idea that there is no ability to go in, is allowing that process to happen through email or to, through some kind of portal where you would submit those things. Uh, but you, in order to deal with the paycheck program, you must deal with a certified bank that is a lender on behalf of the SBA. Gotcha. Now, there's a question on here. The SBA form indicates full-time employees. Do you have to be full-time? Can you be part-time? So that, what that means under the Department of Labor is this concept of a full-time equivalent. If they're paid through payroll, that is the standard. Whether their payroll is a full-time equivalent is the issue. And those can be part-time hours to fall into that. So everyone on your payroll sense, census, for sure, I would include. If you have people that you have a real argument exist as people you pay as an equivalent, but not in your payroll census, I would include them as well. Um, you just are going to have a little bit harder uh, analysis to um, justify as to why you might be entitled to that. So someone on the chat here said that they took their application to the bank for PPP with the 1099s and the bank wouldn't accept it with the 1099s attached to it. Should they go try a different financial institution? Yeah, because I, it's, it's, it's actually, now it, I don't know enough about that 1099 issue because if it's 1099, so like if, if for example, uh, you're using an IT, like company to host your website and all that stuff and you have, I know it's an interesting example considering our audience but assuming someone's maintaining that and managing your servers well then that's not going to be an allowed expense the SBA has been very clear about that um, but it and so that situation is going to be a problem and in a lot of banks if you're off your payroll register and you can't show a payroll census you're going to have a problem that's not true of every bank though some community banks, credit unions, and mid-sized banks, actually a couple larger ones, have and are approving through those full-time equivalents on 1099s. 
And I'm sorry, I, I want to apologize in advance, I guess on behalf of lunacy. That is true. You are going to see some people get it and some people not. So I would actually, before I decide to take the worst case situation from my bank, I would look for other options. That's great feedback. Well, look, we want to be completely respectful of your time here. I'm going to, I'm going to make quick note, Jordan, who works with you, has posted the link to the Fully Accountable Recession Survival Kit in the chat. Everybody needs a note. We'll take that link. We'll add it to the Alibi Security website later on today so it'll be accessible from our resources section as well. And I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen real quick and just show you guys can I, can I, while you're doing that, can I yeah, ask for sure. two questions in here I'd like to help comment about? One is, is there a listing of SBA approved banks? If you go to the SBA, there is a link right there, very accessible, that will give you a list of approved banks. The yeah. other thing I would do is recognize that the SBA is bringing on more and more um, uh, kind of loan funding companies like the Cabbages and the get monies of the world who are actually participating in this program. And uh, I would also look at your community banks and your credit unions. So there are other places. And then the other one was, what about S Corps with no employees? Great question. The SBA broke up through the banks. The first wave of filing is for, you know, companies and sole, excuse me, sole proprietors. The next wave of filing are for independent contractors and self-employeds. Most people who fall into S Corp with no employees are gonna look like a self-employed. Now, interestingly, in order to make that calculation work correctly, you're gonna to have to show things that are not inside a payroll register. How ironic. They separated those into two categories and you won't at a minimum have until this Friday and more like next week, have even a shot to apply until this first wave is has applied through. Go ahead, Chris. That's awesome. I'm just looking, looking through if there are any other questions that we haven't addressed already. Yeah, I think that's most of them. Are okay, loans cool. on vehicles considered as expenses? Um, not for purposes of Jim, not for purposes of qualifying for the loans. That's not a payroll cost. I do see that some not-profit organizations and some for-profit organizations that have commission structures, if you have built inside of your payroll uh, as a benefit some of the, um, the expenses of either housing or, or vehicles as an other comp, then maybe, but the loans themselves um, are, are not going to qualify for the calculation. Perfect. Well, you know, one of the things we're committing to do is uh, at this URL that I'm sharing on my screen right now is to continue to update the resources and assets that folks like Vinny uh, are providing to us and that we're finding online to uh, really help you guys stay up to date with all the latest information. We're really trying to do a good job of being pretty um, diligent about only including links to places that will be continually updated so we don't give you guys outdated information. So if you go out to alibisecurity.com slash COVID actions, there's a communication tab on that landing page. Later on today, we will have links to a lot of the SBA resources. We'll have uh, a link to the uh, recession survival guide that Vinny mentioned. We will also uh, we're recording this session. We will be posting this online as well later on today in case you guys want to go back through it. I know there's tons and tons of really good information, and sometimes it's hard to digest it all in one fell swoop. So we'll make this available as well. And Chris, so, I'm going to make yeah. one final or maybe a couple final comments, but for one, sure, that if you're that person sitting here uh, watching this, and great job, Chris, way to pull this together. I, I think this is gonna be a valuable resource to your community, and it shows a lot how much you care about these guys. Um, if you're that type of person that's an S Corp with no employees, if you're, let's just for sake of this discussion, say that overall your wage is around $100,000 at the bottom. Well, that's $8,333 a month that's gonna qualify in this calculation. Well, that, is 
$20,800 or some amount of money that you are going to qualify to get back in this loan that's going to convert into a grant. That's a big deal. Don't not go get that from your bank. All right. Even if you're that person, you will qualify for this. Now you can't apply until like next week at the earliest this Friday, but that's real money. That's a big deal. And that's going to help a lot to keep a lot of good, healthy, um, self-employed working in this marketplace. Excellent. Yep. Well, Vicky, we, we greatly appreciate your time. We know that yep. you've got, you've got these sessions uh, locked and loaded for most of the day today. And yep. I know this is a, a fluid ever evolving uh, situation. We appreciate you bringing the latest knowledge to our, our dealer partners. Again, as you said, it's our goal to provide value besides just selling product. We want to make sure that these guys and gals know that we're all in this together. We're all trying to figure it all out. And that's why we bring on uh, folks like you to help us uh, make sense of it all. So we And then really, a big really shout out it. to someone on your team, Chris, you know, Bill Rogers really jumped in front of this for you guys. And he, I, he just really cares about the community. So we're on this call today because Bill uh, scrambled and over the weekend forced me to scramble and do all these things. And so I, I, I wanted to make sure your organization, everyone knows that Bill and his team are really working to make sure we can put the best things in front of you guys. Yeah, for sure. Well, we thank everybody for uh, participating and joining us for this, uh, for this special session today. We'll get all these resources locked and loaded online later on today. And if in the meantime, if you have any other questions, reach out, reach out to your uh, account manager and we'll try to get those answered as well. Thanks, Thanks so much, Vinny. We, we appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me, guys. All right.